Now we're going to cover Bob 423 tracks and routes and how to use uh, with Acromap and Navionic apps. First of all, go to Bob uh, 423 tracks. Uh, you go to bob423.blogspot.com. Uh, tap on the heading under the blue banner to view the details on how to download tracks, uh, GPX routes, hazards lists, and track descriptions. Uh, tap on tap uh, descriptions, for example. Up comes a list of tracks, and it shows you uh, the track number on the left hand side, the mile marker it covers, a description, and what was seen relative to minimum uh, depth. And you look at that for a moment and uh, take a uh, record what tracks you want to download by the track number at the far left. That starts with a T. <clears throat> then you go back and you double tap 2019 Fall Hampton to Titusville. Uh, and that's, uh, let me get, do that for you. Like here, for example, you'll tap that. See what happens. You should be see this screen next when you tap it. A list of all the uh, tracks that are within that folder, and you see all the tracks that are listed in the track description. And at the top, a what I call a super track has all the tracks in one package. If you load this track then all the other track beneath it will load automatically. Makes it convenient. And it works with both uh, Acromap and Navionics. <clears throat> okay, now furthermore, tap once on the track you want. It turns blue. And here you see it turned blue. Then tap on the download arrow shown at the upper left on the screen. Right there. You will be asked if you want to download if you want to download, tap on download as shown below. There. Next foil. Look to the upper right of the screen and tap on the down arrow. You'll see it right there, and it may at first jiggle up and down to show you that something's happening. The list will appear available for downloads you want. Tap on the one you want. I'll tap on that. And you get a screen that looks a little complicated. Uh, a page appears with lots of text, and these are all the text tracks, but we'll ignore that. You want to tap on the air icon at upper right, which is right there. It's a familiar open-in icon uh, that Apple uses. You will be presented with a choice of apps to use in loading the GPX file. Uh, an example, I chose Acromap, and I will give it a tap. For example, right there. Some apps do not play well with others, and try to come at the air of the download without asking you, which doesn't allow you to select Acromap or Navionics. Triple Mix is identified to date include Dropbox and some other navigation apps. Just delete them. They usually work okay after a reinstall. Acromap and Navionics work well together. So anyway, we tapped on Acromap, and then Acromap comes up and says, well, I found 20 tracks. Do you want to import them into your archive? Well, sure I do. I'll tap Import. Ah, it happened. All the tracks are loaded from Hampton to Tidesville uh, in one step. Isn't that nice? The process can be repeat, repeated for track in Titusville, Florida to Key West, or from Poughkeepsie, New York to Hampton, Virginia. The same process works for Navionics, Navionics too. Let's take a look. Here's all the tracks. This time, tap on Navionics. Right there. Again, if an icon does not appear, stroll the list with your finger from right to left. If it's still not there, tap on More. Then look for it. 
If you're still missing an app that you know is installed, then there's a misbehaving app that's blocking other apps from being viewed. Start deleting navigation apps other than Acromap and Navionics, and then they will appear. You can always reinstall the misbehaving apps later. That usually fixes the blocking problem. I imported the same file with all the tracks from Hampton to Titusville. You may get an error message saying you can only import one file at a time. Ignore it by tapping OK. You can find the tracks with a tap on Menu, followed by a tap on Tracks. Type in a T underline in the search field here. That will only display the Bob 423 tracks since all my tracks start with a T and underline. Tap on any track to display it in Navionics. Let's try this guy. Okay. Ah, there it is. It's now shown in Navionics. Navionics will only display one track at a time, unlike Acromap, which lets you display them all at once. If you have both Acromap and Navionics loaded on the same device, then you can just send tracks back and forth between them using Apple's Open In option. You don't have to reload them off the website. Well, how do you do that? Well, you just use the Open End. Now, Navionics has a great feature. It's not yet an Acromap, but called Alder Routing. Let's create a route automatically. I entered CoinJock as a starting point and Dowry Creek Marina as the destination. You see it right here. The automatic route produced by Navionics is shown at left. There you see it. Would it be nice if you could easily transfer that little route to Acromap? Here's a close-up, entrance to Alligator River. However, be sure to double-check the route. I would not go that way. Well, let's see what we can do here. Top left, after tapping on menu, bottom left, finger slide route to left and tap on shear. In this case, it was the current route. Top right, export menu appears. Tap on export. Bottom right, choose app to export to. I chose Acromap. You see the export here. Acromap. Sure. And that's what I tapped on. So top left, tapping on menu. Bottom left, finger slide route to the right, like that, and tap on share. Top right, export menu appears, tap on export. Bottom right, choose the app to export to, I chose Acromap. Let's see what happens. Ah, look at that. Acromap is automatically displayed, asking if you want to import the route. Tap on import. Acromap then displays the route that you made with auto routing and avionics. There we go. Now get the same route in both Navionics and uh, Acromap. And you can share routes back and forth. If you have a route in uh, Acromap, you want to put a Navionics to track it, or a track, you can use the same technique to do both. In other words, you have to load it off the website into one of the two. Well, actually load it in Acromap first. That makes it easy. And then from Acromap, you can transfer to Navionics without having to download it once again off the website. Now, tap anywhere in the route for the pop-up above. Tap on the eye. You tap on this any, anywhere in the red. Let me get, get a different color. I tap anywhere in the red, then I tap on that little eye. Route info is displayed, which is all this stuff. Route Explorer automatically shows the hazards, the bridges, and the lowest fuel price on the route. Tap on the eye and Explorer icon. That's this, this guy right here. Let me back out. Route Explorer gives you options on what to see. Here only have hazards and bridges highlighted. Note the hazard at 2.3 nautical miles ahead. When underway, all times are converted into ETA based on current boat speed. Nice. Note, note that this is a lift bridge, and that's a fixed bridge.
I wanted to see who had the lowest fuel price, so I highlighted marinas too. Diver Creek had the lowest price on this route today. Uh, and whatever I had to call it, maybe periodically keep it, keep it current. Uh, here you see a Diver Creek marina. Here you see the price, which is kind of neat, I think, but to have it uh, in front of you on today's journey. Your bridges will also have ETA times displayed whether they are fixed or lift bridges. That turns into an ETA when you're actually underway. Remember that shortcut I said it wouldn't take? Well, in this case, it looks like there's a good match between uh, survey data and Navonic sonar charts. They both show about the same depth. And, you know, this is okay because it's not a rapidly shoaling area. So you could take it if you want. However, I'm still hesitant about taking shortcuts in the Alligator River because I know there may be stumps and sawed off uh, pilings present underneath the water. I just soon take the, the recognized channel that other boats have been through. So if they hit something, they'll usually talk about it and I'll know in advance as opposed to me finding out for the first time that there's something there that shouldn't be there. Now, Bob, fortunately, routes are also available for download using the same steps as for the tracks. The link is one of the choices on the track download page. Tracks cover the entire ICW, but routes only cover shallow areas. Why use a route when you have a track? Next page. Tracks are never updated. Well, almost never. <laughs> I, did, I did update a track at Jupiter Inlet because I was concerned. They worked at the time of the timestamp in their name. As we know, all things change. How can we account for changes that may affect a track? That's where routes come in. I issue new routes when I see a channel change that affects a previous track. How to tell which to use, track or route. Look at the timestamp in the name and use the one with the most recent date. Okay. Following my track within a few weeks is easy. It's the most current. Wait six months and there could be a route you should follow instead. Lockwood's Folly at now Mark 221 North Carolina Shoal and was dredged since my track of 10, 17, 19. A new route is now available. It's a B Lock 02, 1820, shown in red. Brown's Inlet is being dredged marked at 2020. Use the route since the date is after the date of the, uh, of the track. That'll show you the straight through route uh, if they haven't moved the, the buoys to market yet. Available on the same track and route website is a list of waterway guide hazards that keep current. They're referenced to page number in the guide and to mile markers. Typing in the link brings up the detail. There is an example, which you saw before. Uh, also, the waterway guide webpage has a wealth of information. Uh, fuel, moorings, services, anchorages, free docks. But at the bottom of the page, tap on the fuel price list. This guy right here. Look what you get. Fuel price reports. Atlantic ICW, Virginia through Georgia. <clears throat> you can select what area you want to cover. You want to see. If you want to see just... Uh, The Gulf Coast, you can see just the Gulf Coast. Once you select what you want to see, then you have an option of sorting it by mile marker or sort it uh, alphabetically. And then you get a list on that list by mile marker, for example, uh, that shows you uh, everything you, you uh, want to know relative to what the prices are uh, for fuel. Grade 8 and find the lowest fuel price. So a summary. On the block spot, uh, track covering the Atlantic ICW from Hampton to Fort Lauderdale and from Fort Lauderdale to Key West. Uh, route for selected areas prone to shelling. And a list with links uh, to what we got alerts from Hampton to Key West. The ICW uh, Cruising Guy Facebook site uh, is there listed. 
and the ICW uh, Cruising Guide is available. It's been updated to uh, March of 2020. And of course, what do we guide? What page? A wealth of information. Uh, a lot of information available. And as a closing argument, uh, thanks for coming. Remember, yesterday is but a memory. Tomorrow is yet to be. Only today is real. Enjoy life and the present, especially now. Thanks for coming. Uh, all of the uh, links to the videos will be present on that ICW uh, Blogspot site as soon as I modify it over the next uh, few hours. Thank you for listening.